everybody, Chris Grandy with a Quora question answer. Chris Grandy answers Quora. And today's uh, question that popped up in front of me was a good one because it's pretty commonly done in, uh, in bull markets. And this is where a lot of people get really comfortable, especially after a 10 year bull. And, you know, in bull markets, typically, uh, you know, bounce back. And that, that is, um, should you average down an investment? That means as the price drops, should you, should you be buying more? And there may be times you want to do this. And there are actually, there are times when everybody does this, you know, with, especially with the retirement plans, like 401ks, et cetera. Um, excuse me, I'm dog sitting today. So you'll have to just have to excuse the noise, but, um, you know, there are, there, everybody kind of does it all the time anyway, because you know, the market's often going up and down, especially in the short term. And if someone has a 401k or, or such, and they're investing every month with their salary deferrals, they are likely oftentimes averaging down at one point or another. But generally speaking, is it a good idea? And I think they're asking the question maybe more from a particular stock example, because with, say, mutual funds or index funds with your 401k, you know, it's basically about accumulating shares and, you know, whether that always will work, I don't know, but we know that it works. It has worked, but let's talk about individual shares. And I, like I said, the real risk on this with the bull market is that every time, because every time you see the market drop, it pops back up and you kick yourself saying, geez, why didn't I buy some? Why didn't I buy some? Why didn't I buy some? And I've been seeing this for, you know, this has been going on now for 10 years. It's been an incredible uh, bull market. Anytime there's been any, any kind of of decent correction of 10% or more, which has happened maybe once a year. You know, I think we, I don't think we, we had one obviously at the end of last year, which was about 20% correction on the Russell. We had in 17 was mainly a bull year, but 16 we had one right before the election. Um, I think we had one earlier that year too, 2015 in like February, we had a decent size correction. Uh, so, you know, every year, almost every year, we've had an opportunity to do this. And so people kick themselves. So what happens is the market trains you to go all in. And so is this a good idea to, to do that? Well, with a particular company, there are a few reasons. Um, there, there are times when you might want a dollar cost average. So for example, 401ks, you're, you're just accumulating shares in, in a fund, et cetera, and you're building for the long term, and you're banking on either the index holding quality companies or the mutual fund holding quality long-term investments. So you've taken out the you know, the, the specific company risk from this equation, and therefore you can accumulate, all right? Um, other times you can dollar cost average if you or average down. If, you, you, if you're talking about individual stock, you really have done your research, and this is your style. I mean, there are very successful value managers or people that do this, and that's how they make a lot of money. Not everybody, but that is how they do it. So, I mean, if, if, if your goal is to make a lot of money buying, say, value stocks or such, or buying stocks that are cheaper, you're going to have to have a, a better than even odds at pulling this off. And typically that involves, you know, betting heavily, but if you're wrong, getting out, like you don't just buy a bunch of stuff and then watch it deteriorate. I mean, if your thesis changes, you got to get out. But generally speaking, those type of people also will average down an investment. Um, so those are the times you might do that. You really know what you're doing. Index funds, your retirement plan, um, you know, and particularly if you're in a bull market, I mean, obviously if, if it's going up and your stock goes from 20 to 40 and drops down to 30, but the overall trend is up. Yeah. Buy some, you know, I mean, if you're going this way, um, you know, that might be different. So now let's speaking of that, let's address, uh, when it might not work. Well, I think obviously in a bear market, uh, you, you know, it takes a long time to recover. You know, you think about the bull market of 2000, how the index didn't get back to that same level until 2010. So you basically had a whole decade where, you know, you were, you know, if, if you had most of your money, if you were close to retirement in 2000, let's say you were 60 years old and you had a million and a half dollars or something, and you weren't really, you, you know, you're not really in a position to add to your investments because you're kind of winding down. Then in 2010 at age 70, you just got even. So if you were using any of your investments to live on, you likely have less money. Um, and the only chance you maybe had more money was if you were able to add to your investments over that time. So obviously, um, in bear markets can really hurt people. So if you're buying more and more and the market's dropping more and more, you're going to see larger and larger losses. So whereas you might have had a 20% loss, if you take money out of the bank and then buy on the dip, and then it 
falls down. Well, now then you effectively have a larger loss in your original investment. So think about it. You have a $100,000 account and you lose 10,000, 10%. You take 100,000 out of the bank and you double up and now you're at 190, you lose another 10%, you've lost 19,000. But that's, you know, that's 19,000 on, on the money you put in. But if you think about your original investment of 100, you've, you've really, uh, you've lost 19% on that particular amount of money. So, I mean, as you're, you have to realize your losses compound also on the downside. Um, where it can also hurt you is if you're talking about individual stock, if you really don't know what you're doing when it comes to that stock or, or you, know, you haven't done the research, you, you don't know the triggers of what makes that company make money. What are the, what are the catalysts that would make the stock go up? Uh, if you're not even aware of that, that's one thing. And a lot of times you're buying down on the stock that you like, but then you find out later on some news comes out as to why that stock was dropping. And you didn't, um, you know, you didn't uh, pay attention. You didn't recognize that issue. And only when it became public, did that issue, did you realize what the problem was and why the stock was dropping? But by the time this news is public, you might have already lost 50% or more. And in those situations where if there's something truly wrong with the company, you could have permanently lost capital. And the other downside to averaging down is that it tends to affect the ego. And, you know, and I've done this in the past, no doubt. Um, when a stock is dropping, you, you think, oh, it's getting more and more of a deal. So you buy bigger and bigger and bigger and it becomes a too large a position compared to the rest of your portfolio. And then if it doesn't work out, if the situation pops up, like I said, where some news comes out, you really get hammered. And that's a loss that's very hard to come back from and takes a while to come back from to rebuild if you put a significant amount of your money on something and then boom, surprise, and bad news. And you know you're not getting your money back because the news that comes out confirms why the stock had been dropping all that time. Um, so obviously if you don't know what you're doing, if you're in a bear market, um, especially stock specific, I mean, index funds, again, like I said, or mutual funds, you've diversified, you've either because of diversification or because of the mutual fund, um, analyst team that you're delegated to them, the elimination of individual company risks. So you're just basically accumulating shares in the economy by buying a whole mutual fund or a whole index fund. Uh, in that case, you know, that averaging down can make sense. But we've talked about when it could make sense. We talked about when it could be a bad idea. Let me tell you where it's a really bad idea. Okay, some people, especially again, we've been conditioned by the 10-year um, bull market. Look, the market's up today because there's no news. So realize there is an upward bias in the market anyway. No news, people just buy. You know, there's nothing to, must be all good. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, if the intellect that went into, let me just say as a side note, if the intellect that went into investing was used anywhere else, we'd have millions more dead people in hospitals, et cetera. I mean, it's just mindless. But you know, in any other profession, if they, if they um, thought like this, you know, like, like people who throw money at, at markets think, it'd be a disaster. Um, but that being said, we talked about when it makes sense, when it could make sense. We talked about when it doesn't make sense. Let's talk about when it really doesn't make sense. And this is somebody who thinks they're smart and they sell put options on stocks. What are put options? That's an option to, um, and a put option is an option to sell a stock. I'm looking down here at something and I realize my camera's up there. So I'm doing that a lot, I'm sorry. A put option is an option to sell a stock at a certain price. So um, if you owned a stock at 50 and you wanted to make sure you didn't lose all your money, and you bought put options at 45, that means that no matter how, um, that you always have the right, as long as you own that option, to sell the stock at 45. So even if the stock dropped to zero, you can go back to the person that sold you that put and say, hey, listen, you're gonna buy it from me at $45. Doesn't matter what the current price is, you're gonna do that. That's one way to protect yourself. But some people who think they're smart, they're on the, they're on the other side of this and they're selling puts. Now, professionals can sell puts because they have a large book of business to balance off all their risks. But individuals will do this on companies they like because they figure, well, if the price drops and someone makes me buy it at a lower price, I want it at that lower price. I like this company. Um, you know, and the problem here, though, is, again, with puts, you might sell some and say, oh, I'll buy it at this price. But then you might sell more thinking, well, it's not going to drop all the way down here. So this is just free money. I sell this guy a put for $100. It's never going to drop that low. I get to keep the hundred if it if it expires before it drops that low. This is like free money. But in a serious correction, what happens to a lot of these people is they sell more puts than they have capital in their account to back. 
And what happens then is they go negative and they blow up. And that can happen to real smart guys. And, and, and that's a worst case scenario of averaging down. I like this company. I'm going to sell more puts on it. I'm going, to, I'm going to sell more puts. I'm going to buy shares. I'm going to sell puts. And then boom, you know, that again, like that other scenario, the news comes out. Why has it been dropping? Oh, there really is something bad going on here. This price is not coming back. As a matter of fact, this news is really bad. The stock falls even further after the news comes out. And boom, you all of a sudden you owe, you know, you've, you all of a sudden you sold a bunch of people puts at $45. The stock's worth 10. You have to go buy all, everybody's selling all their $10 shares to you at 45 because you just, you just sold all these puts and you don't have the money in your account to make back up all those puts you sold because you got overexcited and did that. Again, could do it with an index fund reasonably. You know, you have the capital to back it. You're saying, gosh, you know, I would buy this. I would buy shares in the index at lower price. You know, okay, I can see that. You know, I can see people doing that. I can see professionals doing it. I can see people protecting positions doing that. They get a large position. I just did that with one of my clients who has a large biotech holding in the shaky market, and I said, hey, you know what? Um, for the for the for the value of money that her shares bounce around in one day, I was able to pretty much protect um, fifty percent of the holdings. Um, through October with put options. So those are pretty cool to use for protecting. You know, there's a purpose for it. There's risk management. There's a reason for doing it. It's measured. I know, you know, we know exactly why we're doing it, but some people just get over greedy and that's the person who, that's when, when averaging down really doesn't work is if you average down to something that you maybe don't know everything about. On top of it, you're in a bear market or you enter a bear market. The news comes out. And boom, you've over leveraged yourself and just don't have the capital and you blow up. So um, great question. When do you average down? No exact answer. Depends on the time. Depends on the person. But definitely some options to think about there. And it's not guaranteed. In a bull market, yes. But my gosh, if you overextended yourself and this market really turns south, you literally could do damage to yourself that you cannot repair. If you're 50 years old and you wipe out a significant amount of your savings that is you know you you could put yourself decades behind so just be very careful with that do it right if you're going to do it learn about it know your risks measure out the parameters the up and down the potential upside and downside of the decision and then go you know work on it from there so great question thanks for asking that and hope you guys have a great day hope this was helpful if you like the video please like click like Subscribe if you want this and some other stuff. I'm doing an entrepreneur inter interview series. I'm answering core questions. I do other financial planning topics, do some travel videos and uh, some other fun things. So love to have you as a subscriber and into my semi-random channel of finance and life and uh, appreciate you coming by. Thanks so much.